Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby. The 9.2 test server just came out this weekend and I'm going to let you know everything that you need to know about it in a series of videos. There will be a map changes video, there will be a video that highlights the new stronghold features, and then this video which aims to highlight everything else, all the little details, but there's quite a lot of them. Firstly, there are four new high definition tanks being added into the game. Here we can see the Churchill in all of its glory. This is the tier British heavy tank which will be available in HD in 9.2. Next the Stug, the, the G version, the tier 5 is getting an HD model as well. Looks very impressive. And there are two Soviet tanks that are in HD in 9.2. This SU-100. Just take a look down the barrel of this 122mm. A bit of clipping there but you can see that the barrel of the HD tanks is rifled when historically accurate. And one of the original tier 7 heavy tanks, the IS, is now in full HD glory for you guys. And the tracks do look lovely on this tank. Nevertheless, Wargaming are taking an interesting route with regards to their HD tanks. Now I'm led to believe by the patch notes that HD will only display for your tank. Everyone else's tanks will be viewed in the standard model. Now there's a couple of things I think about this. Obviously they're trying to do this to stop lower performance computers from lagging when there's a lot of HD tanks on the enemy team. And that's great news for a lot of players. However, I, I feel like I'm going to be quite disappointed. There aren't that many HD tanks in the game and when you do see one on the battlefield, quite often you stop and just look at the model. At the start of the game when I'm loading in as an example, if I see that there's an HD tank on my team, such as a T-54, even if I'm not driving an HD tank, it's quite nice to just look at it while you're zoning in. Or alternatively, if you're going from A to B with an HD tank, it's quite nice to look at it as well. So I'm a little disappointed that you're not going to have that kind of eye candy to look out for even if you're not driving an HD tank yourself. Maybe this is only a temporary fix while Wargaming continue to improve their engine performance. I would have personally preferred it if maybe they'd had an extra option, maybe in the details section where you can uncheck displaying HD tanks for your opponents and allies. So for me this is neither a, a good thing nor a bad thing. I probably think that they're going to implement this in a different way in the following patches. Other news is that the recently revamped map Comorin is being changed so that tier 9 and tier 10 tanks will never have to play Comorin. Now many of you Comorin haters will be rejoicing at this and as long as you play your tier 9 and tier 10 tanks you will never have to see Comorin in 9.2. Now I believe they're going to be doing this because a high view range tank of which all tier 10s have 400 plus, and most tier 9s are around about 400, can rush and see a huge percentage of the enemy at the start of the game. I like the fact that rather than completely removing the map, they're still putting it in the game for tiers 1 to 8, and I'm just thinking about how wonderful it will be at increasing your chances of being top tier in your tier 8 tank. When you're driving a tier 8, it will be a pleasure to see Comorin, as you're going to be guaranteed to be top tier in your vehicle. They are also adding in a new skin for the Prohorovka map. It's going to be called Fire Arc, and it is beautiful. I'm going to go over this in more detail in another video, so keep an eye out for that one. Also, it's worth noting that there will be no historical battles in 9.2, as far as I'm aware. I personally believe that the historical battles have been very poorly optimized. In the last patch, 9.1 on the European servers, we saw horrible matchmaking with Matilda dominance and only one historical battle available. I hope that Wargaming really have a strong rethink about the historical battle game mode, as I have no interest in really playing it where there have been a, a couple of dominant tanks each time in 9.0 and also in 9.1. There is also a new foliage transparency option. This is a performance fix, and if you disable it, then instead of the bush going transparent when you get within a certain distance of it, it will be completely hidden. So I've played a few games on the test server and I've found that when you do have this disabled it's quite tricky to tell if you've actually gone through the bush or not when you're trying to use it for camera rating. Nevertheless for players who are struggling with performance in high foliage areas then disabling this might improve your game. The SU-85i has now been added in the game for gold. It will cost 2,300 gold and will be the third premium Soviet tank destroyer. Now while this tank can be pretty brutal with regards to its DPM. 
its accuracy and its penetration parameters are pretty horrible. And as it is a tier 5 premium vehicle, it is quite tricky to make good money with it. I question whether we needed a third Soviet premium tank destroyer in the game. When for me personally, the SU-12244 and the SU-100Y were fairly good tanks. It's more interesting for me if they're going to be adding in the T-4485, which we saw a very long time ago on a test server, or if they're going to be adding in the T-54 as a premium tank, pretty much stock at tier 8. Also, this is very minor, but it's worth a mention that the Chaffee has had the alpha damage of its premium ammo with its 76mm increased by 5, so it's now the same as its AP. A nice little buff for one of the funnest little toy tanks in the game. Now I'm going to talk through all the balance changes and there have been a lot to the vehicles in the game. Firstly, let's look at the German tanks. The Alps Panther has had its 7.5 slash 5.5 centimeter Waffe 0725 gun buff. It's now got a better rate of fire. Nevertheless, this isn't really a significant buff for uh, a very particular light tank. The whole line has indeed been buffed and the Indenpanzer has remarkably benefited from patch 9.2. Its rate of fire has been increased to 8.33 rounds a minute, and its aim time has been improved to 2.7. This might actually make the Indenpanzer one of the most competitive tier 8 tanks. And apart from the Object 416, this has to be the highest DPM of any of the medium tanks. And the aim time buff is simply lovely. The biggest weakness of the Indian Panzer was the aim time, and we'll see how this vehicle does in 9.2. It's definitely one to look out for. Next, let's look at the Leopard prototype. It's received quite a significant rate of fire buff to its 105mm, going from 5 flat to 5.41. This is about 8% overall damage increase to the Leopard prototype, a lovely change to one of the best guns at tier 9 which should make this a lot more competitive with example the Type 61 and gives it enhanced DPM compared to a fairly similar Centurion 7-1. Also, the Daddy Leopard, the Tier 10, has received a buff as well. The rate of fire has been increased from 6.67 to 6.9, making one of the most dangerous Tier 10 medium guns even more lethal. Now, it's not all love for the Germans. The Borsig has been nerfed. But only the 128mm, the 15cm gun is still the same. So if you use the 150mm for your clan wars, then don't worry, it's unchanged. But everyone who loved the fantastic rate of fire of the 128mm is going to be disappointed, as it has been nerfed to 5.22 rounds a minute. It's still slightly more than the Yank Panther 2 or the Ferdinand, but then again, those tanks can use rammers. While the Borsig can't, which means that really they're actually going to fire quicker than the Borsig is. Nevertheless, this sneaky German tank is still going to be very, very powerful. And almost exactly the same has happened to the Waffenträger Alf Panzer IV. Instead, however, both of the guns have been nerfed. The 150mm and the 128mm have had their rate of fire nerfed by roughly 5%. And finally, there are quite dramatic changes for the Waffenträger Alf E100. The dispersion on the move for the tank has been increased by 25%. The dispersion on turning the tracks has been increased by 25%. This will mean that it takes longer for the Waffenträger Alf E100 to aim at its targets after it has just been moving, which I think is a great change considering the very low aim time on this tank. And it should give you a chance to either pull back or sneak a shot at the target and then move as quickly as you can to avoid getting wrecked. Now, there's been no changes to the 150mm gun. However, not many Waffenträger drivers would use that. They were using the 128, which has been changed. Now, overall, it's a nerf as they have reduced the size of the magazine from 6 shells to 5 shells. That makes the new average damage of the clip 2,800. Still enough to clip every single tank in the game apart from the mouse when it rolls for its average damage. To compensate for this, they have reduced the time it takes to reload the clip. However, they haven't reduced it linearly with removing the shell in the game. I.e. the reload has gone from 60 seconds to 52 seconds. Whereas if they wanted to take one of the shells away from the clip without reducing its DPM, the rate of fire would have changed to 50. This means that the 150mm will actually reload faster than the 128mm and it will do more damage on average if you penetrate all your shells, i.e. The 150mm will do on average 3,000 damage, and the 128 will do 2,800 on average. All you have to do is try and penetrate with those 235mm AP shells, or compensate by loading heat. I think this makes the, the guns pretty much as good as each other. 
Overall, I believe these are good changes. The Waffenträger will take longer to aim after it has been moving, and also now the driver really has to choose between which gun they want to take and it will change how the vehicle works. I personally think I might try out the 150mm, which was still competitive, but now really with the nerfs to the 128, the 150mm looks all that more tempting. Next, players who have the mouse cry now. And players who don't yet have the mouse or haven't ground their way through the VK4502P rejoice, because the frontal armor of this tank has been buffed massively. It's now 200mm on both the lower plate and the upper plate, whereas previously the upper plate was 170 and the lower plate was 150. Now this 150 on the lower plate was easy to penetrate, but now with redonkulous 200mm frontal armor, you're gonna have to find other ways to make this tank look silly. Whether I think this tank is still as good as the 75, I don't think it is. Nevertheless, at least this tank has something. Previously I felt that the 75's frontal armor was better. At least because the side armor is not 100 millimeters, which means that if you try and side scrape, you couldn't angle the front of the tank enough to avoid them just being able to penetrate your side armor. Now having 20 millimeters of less side armor compared to the 75 is not so much a problem on the VK4502B, because by angling your tank, it doesn't mean that they're going to be able to penetrate your frontal armor easily. So there you go, guys. No excuses now. There's never going to be a better time to get your mouse than in 9.2. So that's it for the German vehicles, I think fantastic changes all round. Some of the worst tanks at their tier have been buffed. I personally don't think that the Leopard 1 need a buff, but I'm going to go into more detail about the tier 10 medium tank changes later on in this video. Now when you think about overpowered tanks, what do you think about? And I think about the Hesch ammo on the 183. But never fear because it's being at least rebalanced next patch. The penetration is being changed from 275 to 230. Now as Hesh kind of works as HE, that means that the splash damage should be reduced overall, and also the likelihood of penetrating the enemy tank and doing max damage will be reduced as well. Nevertheless, I have been doing some testing in this tank and I was still able to penetrate most of my shots, but I have to admit that I was having to aim a lot more carefully than I would have last patch. I don't think the 183 will be crippled, but those, oh my god, I just got one shot, kind of moments should be reduced in frequency. I do have to admit, however, that I was still firing at the superstructure of a Jagdpanzer E100 and rolling for 700 damage even when I failed to penetrate him. And I found that my splash damage was still between 500 and 800. It is, however, going to have to make the user think a lot more about using the AP ammunition, which has 310 millimeters of penetration. I don't think it's going to be a case anymore of the Hesh is always better to fire. I don't think it's always going to be better to fire, but I think it's still going to be better to fire in the majority of situations. However, your Hesh ammo is still nearly four times the price of your regular AP rounds. Balance changes on the 183 were completely needed, and I feel that they're a good step in the direction to making this vehicle more balanced. Next, British medium tank drivers rejoice. I didn't have any problems with this vehicle in 9.1, but I'm going to be playing it a hell of a lot more in 9.2, as the rate of fire has been buffed by 8% from 6.45 rounds a minute to 6.98 rounds a minute. This is absolutely redonkulous. This tank has gone from having pretty much the third worst BPM on any of the medium tanks to leapfrogging the Leopard 1, leapfrogging the M48A1 and positioning itself quite competitively with the 121 and the Object 430 with regards to DPM. So I prepared a graph for you to show you exactly what the changes mean for the Leopard 1 and the FV4202. Here we can see the DPM, i.e. the damage you can do per minute, of the Tier 10 medium tanks. The lowest, the Batchat, and when you think about it, this is even lower because it can't use a rammer, and the highest, the SDB1. The blue bar represents the DPM of the tank in 9.1, and the red bar represents what the DPM is going to be in 9.2 if the test server stays it as it is. While previously the FE4202 had the third worst DPM in 9.1 of any of the medium tanks, next patch it's going to situate itself right in the middle, having more DPM than the Leopard and less DPM than the 121. The Leopard as well will increase its DPM, but not by as much as the FE4202 did, and overtake the M48A1. Interestingly, what we're going to see is there's going to be a very large disparity between the E50M and the M48A1 and the rest of the vehicles. The key things to draw out really is that the E50M has 20% less DPM than the SDB1. So obviously, the only real winners are the Leopard and the FE4202. 
The real loser is the E50M, which is now more distanced than ever with regards to DPM than the other medium tanks. It's worth considering that the E50M has 20% less DPM than the SDB1. Fair enough it has other characteristics like armor to make up for it, but interestingly tanks like the FE4202 and the Leopard that had really good accuracy, and especially the gun depression, 10 degrees of gun depression, now have raw DPM. And I can't wait to play the FE4202 in patch 9.2. Other tanks which have received love are the M46 Patton, which has received an accuracy buff on its top gun. It's now 0.4 rather than 0.42. And also it's going to be faster to aim after you turn your tank both with the hull and the turret, with dispersion on track traverse decreased by 8% and turret traverse decreased by 17%. I'm definitely going to be rebuying an M46 pattern in the next patch. Just looking at this raw DPM 6.45 at tier 9. Only sold it because I didn't have premium tanks back then and I want to get my hands on this beast once more. For the Soviet low alpha damage tank destroyer line leading up to the Object 263, they've all received buffs to their damage. The Object 263 now has a devastating 5.61 rate of fire, while the SU-12254 has slightly better accuracy at 0.35 with its 122mm, and a significantly better rate of fire now up to 6.52 rounds a minute. The SU-101 received a similar kind of treatment, its accuracy has been increased, and its rate of fire has been increased to nearly 9 rounds a minute with 320 alpha damage. And the SU-100M1 had a massive buff, its rate of fire has been increased to 10.17 rounds a minute. And while I still don't think this tank is going to be competitive, or even as fun as the massive alpha damage, on the SU-152 it should still make that grind a little less painful for you. I personally just finished my grind on these tanks, but what are you going to do? I think it's a good buff because I don't think that these tanks were as competitive as the line leading to the Object 268. And even with these buffs, I'm still going to prefer my Object 704, my ISU-152 and the SU-152. It's worth mentioning also that the T-44 got a little bit of buff to its top gun, making the rate of fire 7.41 rounds a minute. A good change to a tank that you don't really see that much at tier 8. So finally there has been a change to the AMX 50B, a tank that needed some love in my opinion. Its aim time has been decreased from 3 to 2.5, which should make the tank more competitive against, for example, the T57 Heavy. While previously the AMX 50B had worse aim time than the T57 Heavy, it now has better aim time than the T57 Heavy. This is a significant buff and it should allow the AMX 50B to fire quicker after its move. Nevertheless, with the rate of fire significantly in advantage of the T57 Heavy, and the delay on the shots still the advantage of the T57 Heavy, I don't feel that the meta will have shifted again from the T57 Heavy to the AMX 50B. So that's all of the patch notes, guys. Remember that I'm going to be doing videos on the new map, the map changes, and the Stronghold game mode. So stay tuned for those videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider rating it down below. It really helps the channel out. And I'm sure there are going to be a lot of comments down below. What do you guys think about these changes? I personally still think it's surprising that the T57 Heavy hasn't been nerfed. But I think all of the other changes have been justified. And I'm personally very surprised that the FB4202 has been given so much love. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.